So this is the Raku firing about to take place. Um, so some sawdust has been put out in some blanket boxes and he's got to get it up to a thousand degrees to um, reach the optimum temperature for Raku firing. So of course the exciting bit is going to be when he takes the things out of the kiln and plunges it into the sawdust and there'll be lots of smoke and everybody will probably run away then. Yes, well we're setting up for Raku firing, the items have been glazed <coughs> and now it's got a sort of oven being placed over the top, a kiln. Very precisely. I have a lid like that, that just keeps the heating down on top of that, top of his head so that should be alright. And how long is that going to take to uh, heat up then, Bill? About an hour. And you've got to hold it for an hour or you lodge it in somehow? Yeah. Let's just test that it will go up to its full capacity. Occasionally it gets a bit blocked up and it doesn't... If you can't get that much flame out of it, it... Uh, oh, that flame's going down out. there, is it? So to start with, it's what's called a lazy flame. We've got to get rid of the water that came into the pots from the glaze. The pots have soaked up a little water. If you heat it up too quickly, that turns the steam and blows apart. So. Hopefully now, that went in at uh, three. Set my watch to go off every quarter of an hour, which reminds me to come and look at the kiln again. And also I've got a timer that's going to tell me how long it's been running for. Let me sort of know there. And the interesting bits when you pull them out and chuck them in the sawdust. Right, yeah. And then we get the alchemy. Uh, this is a medieval temperature center, is it? It is, yes. It's yeah. a new toy. It goes back. How hot is it? It's, uh, I think it's around 950 in the hottest okay. places. Yeah. I'm trying to keep it below 1,000. Right. It's going below 1,000. Right. Most of the heat transfer is starting with this. That's the hat of the witch in there, the yellow bit. That doesn't reach inside the box. And then it starts to radiate. It's going to be a great back to back over the place. Right, so that is Racco in all its 
story. So what is it? how? About a quarter of an hour it'll stay in there and cool him down. It's gone into there at about a thousand degrees. Yeah. It's probably already down to 800. So the, the glazes are now solidified. Now it's got to carry on cooling down. The sawdust actually acts as an insulant, so it stops it from cooling down as quickly as it would be if it was just out in the open. The box helps. So a quarter of an hour or so in there, we know. 20, 20 to 4. So. Opportunity to buy a hot pot straight Indeed, yes, indeed. That's my marketing manager, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll come out of there, it'll sit on the rack for another five or ten minutes, and then it goes into water and gets scrubbed with uh, the wire wool to, to take the soot off it that would have built up on it. And then if you look at it as magnificent as some of the pots in there. Oh, quite I'm going to set up in the background. Attached to your lawn. Not on a prized bit of lawn, though. You should see my lawn, there isn't one. This wasn't the croquet lawn, was it? Well, now you come to mention it, girl. Yes, it does. <laughs> Oh, That's got to go into my car in for half an hour's time, so I'll try and pull it down. <laughs> it does that big yellow pot, you know, he would have done a lot of experimentation, but he's not doing the reduction, so he's using glazes. Yeah. Because the colours are beautiful, and there's a 12, 13 minutes. He's done a fantastic job. Now we get to watch you do the dishes. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, missed the last bit, Jane. There are some people who do this a lot, lot quicker than this. And it only takes sort of uh, a minute from coming out of the kiln to go into the water. But in my humble opinion, that's a great way of breaking the pot. I went to Glastonbury once for the festival. There's a guy doing battery firing out and he was doing that. He had little foot rings on the bottom of all the pots and they all fell off as he put them into the cold water. And thought, well, you're a silly bugger, aren't you? Because it doesn't really enhance the pot at all to have that happen. And the first aid kit doesn't need to get. Oh, here we go. So, try and get it into the water. And completely. So, the whole pot is, is cooled rapidly. Some of the glazes will change colour, so the yeah, was green is becoming yes. turquoise. And what was black will end up as the uh, copper. <laughs> is that just because it's cooling more? Uh, the copper comes because it was buried in the sawdust right. deep, and so it's had all the oxygen starved and ripped out of the glaze. This got into the sawdust while the glaze was still molten. So it's actually scarred the glaze. It's got lines on it where it's got the imprint of the sawdust. Right. So it kind of means that it's not as smooth and um, sort of delicate looking, but on the other hand, it's, it's quite an interesting texture. So I think you can get away with that and still call it artistic. <laughs> my major problem is that I'm a domestic potter most of my life. I don't make this sort of fancy decorative stuff. It's, Useless. This this pot remains uh, porous mm. because it's not fired to high temperature and the glazes crack. But the added advantage is that it's very slightly toxic as well because the, the copper will come out in food. So in some ways, it's, it's, in some ways, it's a completely silly idea. Doing this, but, but on the other hand, it's. Um, I didn't worry about it. Um, Victorians spent a lot of their time using radioactive glass. Well,